Hello, everyone. My name is Devin Langley. I'm a FIRST alum and FIRST Global Innovation Awards Ambassador, and I am so excited to be here with the Robotillers from Bedford, Indiana, who were the 2021 Indiana Global Innovation Awards nominee for the replay season. A few weeks ago, they learned they were selected as one of 20 FIRST LEGO League Challenge finalist teams who will participate in final judging, innovation-focused workshops, and an award ceremony where a winner and two runners-up will be chosen. So hello, Robotillers. I am so happy to be able to catch up with you today. And of course, on behalf of the Finn community, congratulations on this wonderful achievement. We're all so proud of you. Thank you. Yes. So this season, we were given you were given the task to identify a problem related to fitness. So my first question for you all is: What barriers did you discover that are keeping people from staying active and fit? And how does your innovation project address this problem? Well, um, I think Evan over there he he spoke about this a lot. So I think he's knowledgeable yeah. on this. Yeah. So we had to figure out how to get people active. And we did research and found out that people weren't, they didn't find activity fun, engaging, or challenging. And they also didn't really do it with other people. So we had to just figure out how to get people engaged with other people while also being fun and challenging. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's... that's awesome. So I definitely can see how that would be a problem. So can you explain a little more about, you know, how your project, your game that you created is played and maybe, you know, what tools do, um, does the community need to get started? So our game allows for multiple people, multiple groups of people to play together and they're just able to play together as a group, get the points together, just do pretty much everything together because it's just more fun to do the activities. The activities you made are really goofy. They're meant to be silly and just dumb fun. So we figured that doing this with a group would make it even more fun. And we're even adding sort of competitivity to the game by adding leaderboards. So that'll keep people interacting with each other while also engaging them at the same time. Definitely. So kind of like walk me through it. So do you have an app that like an app that your users would download? Like just hypothetically, like not, you don't have to have made it yet or anything, but like they would download an app. Is that right? Yeah, we have made an app. It's still in the making right now, but it works pretty well and it is going to be published hopefully soon, so that players will be able to download it and play. That's amazing. So when you, so say I'm one of your users, I download the app, what's the first thing I'll do and how will I play your game? Um, so it first pulls up our screen, which would just say Lime Sinopoly. You can start the game, read over the rules, and then you begin the game by rolling the dice. And that way you would roll the dice and it would tell you your location, you would go there, scan the QR code, do the activity, and then roll again. That's awesome. So you're kind of going like all around, you made this in your town square, right? So you're going all over your town square to do these different fitness activities by scanning different QR codes around the buildings? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. That's so cool. I love it. And I love how you're getting your community involved with that. And you know, I mean, you're really addressing your problem and playing, you know, it makes being active more fun. And I think you guys are really tapping into that with the idea of Limestoneopoly, you know, as a way to motivate people to stay active in a fun and creative way. So that's really cool. So, yeah, so I'm sure our Finn listeners know that FIRST has joined forces with Disney and Lucasfilm again this season. And I heard you may have had some recent interactions with a Disney Imagineer. So can you tell us what that experience was like for you guys? Yeah, so, oh, it's fine. Okay, you go. All right, so, yeah, we actually, we, that is true. We did talk with a Disney Imagineer. We were on a Zoom call just like this, and we showed him our pitch, our idea pitch, and our little presentation, just to show him what ideas 
or what our ideas were. And he really liked it. He thought it was funny. We had a little skit to do and he liked that. He laughed at one part he felt he fell over and that was funny for everyone. Yeah. And it was just a fun presentation. He gave us some really he actually gave us some really good ideas on promoting and keeping our users engaged, which I'm not sure if I'm supposed to detail, but if if I am, then I will. Whatever you're comfortable with, you can share whatever you want. He uh, told us that starting an Instagram account would be a good idea because a lot of people use it. And there's a lot of people who are younger that use Instagram. So like a younger generation can see it and stuff. And he also gave us the idea of making badges for our game to like motivate the user and keep them engaged in it. Yeah. And the main reason we chose or he chose Instagram was this little feature. It's called Reels, which is basically a really short video that can appear on your feed. And it's just a little showcase. And he said that we could use that to showcase our game and just appeal to more people and reach out to people who may see it in their feed. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like you got some really cool marketing tips and just in general, that sounds like a really cool experience. And I mean, that sounds like a pretty, you know, awesome job to be a Disney Imagineer. Like that's so cool. Um, but did you have any have the opportunity to share your project idea with any other experts as you developed your solution? And did you receive any other advice that helps you to improve your design? Andy, would you like to answer that? Okay. We met with a lot of business owners along the square and they gave some really good advice on how to get the idea out there and how to continue making this game. And we also got a bunch of marketing advice from mentors and a company that we managed to meet with. And that was nice. Yeah, we met with the manufacturer from a straw company and they sell straws. And we also met with another manufacturer who's based in Columbus. And the straw company also happens to be one of the, actually the top selling straw company on Amazon. So that was pretty cool that we got to interview with them and they got to give us some actually pretty good advice. That's awesome. What did you kind of learn from those experiences, consulting those experts? They taught us a lot about how um, like selling things on Amazon works. Like you have to uh, bid for a certain spot whenever like on searches. So if somebody searches straws, you have it, like you would have to bid to get the top spot up there. We also talked talk to our distributors. They told us about um, price margins which would like if you needed like 30 percent to sell it and stuff like that they talked about the pricing and selling well it sounds that's I, I always thought that was so cool to learn about because that's such a big part of the engineering design process and learning those learning about those tools and how you can utilize them to make your idea better so that's awesome so since you have basically transformed you know, your town square into a giant game board. Can you talk a bit about how, you know, your community has supported your project? So uh, about two or so months ago, we actually, back when we were still developing, not really developing, but we were still getting this out there. We actually made a post about this on, I think it was Facebook. And it got pretty popular within our community. Like we got over 16,000 views in just three days. And a lot of them, a couple, a lot of them weren't even from our town. They were somewhere from other countries. It was really cool just for them to see that. And we got a lot of positive support from people from our community who actually saw it. And they were all pretty big advocates for it. That's, that is so cool. That's some, that's some widespread impact right there. Um, but have you invited others to actually play Limestoneopoly? And if so, did those participants share any helpful feedback for you all? Yeah, we had a very large testing group a couple months ago that we did. Um, 
it had about like 30 people in it and we all went and played limestone monopoly and then afterwards we went and interviewed each of the people about like questions about our game and also just this weekend we went um to a little festival thing at a school and evan can talk about that and what we did there he wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> That's my bad. Andy can do it. Yeah, Andy can do it. Okay, so a lot of us invited our family members and a lot of other people that we just knew that might be interested in this like, kind of idea. And all of them shared very positive feedback. Yeah, and at that little festival thing that he just talked about, it was a festival mostly for people who wanted to sell their own little products, but we actually got a lot of people to walk by our booth. We set up a little demo version of our game. We used posters with the same codes and we developed a special version of the app to run with it. And we got a bunch of people just to see what the game was and just the basic idea of it. And a lot of people were interested. They gave us really positive feedback. I think it was around high 80s, I would say they would buy the game high 80, per, not 80s as in 80 people, but like 80% of somewhere around the 80s of percent of people said that they would buy the game from our interviews, which is a pretty high percentage given the amount of people that are there. Yeah. That's incredible. Sorry, go ahead. Were you going to say something else? Me? Um, or him or I, I who else? To. Oh, well, I think, yeah, I'll, I think we're ready for the next thing. Well, that's so cool. Over over 80% is a very high number, and that's really impressive. So congratulations on that. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, it sounds like you've had a few opportunities to get out into your community and, you know, share what you're doing with others, which, you know, is so great because I know that hasn't been, you know, super easy to do this year, you know, with the whole global pandemic thing. Um, but when you do meet other kids or parents who have not discovered FIRST Robotics yet, what do you tell them to encourage them to get involved? So, you know, in other words, what do you love most about FIRST? Well, I think Emmy works a lot with, we have a younger team that's sort of linked with us. We're, we're under the same coaches, mentors and all that. And Emmy also works with them a lot over here. So I think she'll be able to explain that pretty well. Um, I, yeah, I like working with the younger kids, mentoring them a lot and helping them out with stuff is fun. I love mentoring too. So I, I definitely see why you would love that. And that's very important um, to grow the first pipeline too. Um, do any of you, do any others wanna chime in? Let me know what your favorite thing about FIRST is and what your experience has been. I really just love programming and building robots a lot. It's a lot of fun. And working with everybody else is too. I really enjoy programming the robots, Mila. And just like he said, I really like just meeting with meeting with all these all these nerds like <laughs> us that we can just share our ideas over, fawn over them, get the same sort of ideas in our heads it's just really fun to find that similar group and i think that's really what robotics is really strong in yeah i also really like hanging out with all of them and i also like building robots definitely you know first it's like a family it's kind of cheesy but i feel like it's true that that community that you're all talking about is really valuable and i think our core values really help make that even better so it's definitely an incredible, an incredible program, but you know, your, your enthusiasm for what you do really helps us grow first programs. And by sharing your story, we know um, that more young people are going to really take an interest in first like league challenge and, you know, become the awesome problem solvers that you all are. So thank you for that. So next, so as you prepare for the next stage of the Global Innovation Awards, I know teams focus more on more, more attention on the potential for implementation. So have you thought about what the next steps would be to get your game in the hands of others who could benefit from your idea? So yeah, we are actually 
before global innovation, our town or our game was primarily based on our town square, like we mentioned. But after we, a short while after global innovation, we realized this is gonna this town square game is gonna be really difficult to scale worldwide, like other places with really small communities, other places that don't even have squares. It's gonna be difficult, and it some. It's just going to be difficult to get this place to them. It doesn't matter really how big the community is. So we decided that we could remake this sort of as a retail product. So right here is this version of this box. This is our Lime Sternopoly retail, and it's in a box. And instead of codes on buildings, it'll contain, you can't, I'll stretch them out here. It'll contain these QR cards. Yeah, and there's the box right there. So these basically work the same as the codes on the square. But what they do is the user who buys this game, it contains around 45, 44 ish QR cards. And instead of having them already set up around their area, they actually set them up themselves. They register them within our app. And it's sort of, you can write down on them. You can say, oh, this one, this card's for the kitchen, hanging up in the kitchen. This one's for the, this is for mom's bedroom. You can write it, hanging up on mom's bedroom. And it's sort of your own house board game that you can, it's really customizable. And we're even, where's the, there was a box for, there it is. We're even adding little booster <laughs> packs. It's all right. <laughs> we're even adding little booster packs, which we've called pebble packs to fit with the stone theme. There's the box right there. This one's space theme. Yeah, that yeah. one's that one's around space. We have a bunch of different planets and other space little themed icons, and we're gonna have other themes like history, monuments, other things that are just gonna keep this game fresh. And it's I think this is gonna be able to if we work at it, this will be able to reach a wide audience of people who want to play this game and get fit. Just keep active, have fun while doing it, be silly in a group. It'll be able to reach the audience with this retail version. That's so cool. So now I really can see like how those manufacturing experts you were talking to must have been really helpful for this stage of your idea. So I love that. That's so creative. And I'm glad you were able to, I think that's so cool that you recognized, you know, the path you need to take in order to expand and impact a larger community. So that's that's really high level stuff. Good job, guys. Yeah. So, yeah. So, well, we will certainly be watching, you know, with great anticipation to see what you all do next. And I would love to see, you know, those games on the shelves. Like I definitely, my family loves working out. So I'm sure we would, we would be, that's something we would purchase. So, um, but yeah, we're so excited for you. We're going to be rooting you on. Um, so now I have one final question that I would like to direct towards your coach, Mr. Chase. Um, yeah. Hello. Um, so you definitely have a truly impressive group of students here with you today. Um, my question for you real quick is what core value do you think that your team best exemplifies that you know allows them to work so well together and accomplish so much because clearly they do a lot. So. Yeah, if I, if I could only pick one core value, I would say fun. And we actually call that FUM, F-U-M, uh, because that's a, uh, that's a tradition in our club uh, because of um, we, there was a child we had one time, a, a student who uh, wrote it in cursive at the end, and, and it kind of caught on. And so for the last several years, uh, we call that core value FUM, but but it's, it's too bad you only let me choose one because uh, we do like a lot of different core value challenges, we call them, and we go out into a lot of different counties and a lot of different places to do a lot. I think they, uh, this team and a couple, a couple of the other teams we have really uh, give a lot back to the community, and I think they use a lot of the core values not only at the meetings but also in everyday life, you know. So, um, But I would have to go with FUM is my one choice. Well, I love that. That's so, 
That's so important. I can see like just from talking to them today, how clearly they exemplify all the core values. I love how you were making sure, you know, everybody was talking. Um, I think that's something that might seem kind of small, but really has a big impact. So I was very, very impressed with all of you. Um, and I just, I really enjoyed chatting with you all too. And I really appreciate that you took a break from your preparations so that our Finn family could learn more about your amazing project, Limestone Opoly. So the Global Innovation Awards Ceremony will be held remotely on June 30th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on First TV. So please, Finn fam, mark your calendars and plan to tune in so that you can cheer on these creative young innovators as they represent Indiana. So good luck, Robotillers. Again, we are so proud of you and your you are amazing. Thank you for being here with us today. One last thing we'd like to say before we go is if earlier you said that you'd be you'd be watching, uh, you'd be hoping to see our progress. We actually have been posting our progress on our social medias, our Facebooks, our Instagrams, our Twitters. They go under uh, the name of Superior Steam or sometimes Steam Superior. That's our Facebook one. And our Instagram. And our Instagram, yeah. Those are the names of our social medias. And we even have a website, superiorsteam.org. So if both, that also hosts some interesting developments on our game. So if anyone's interested in seeing that, seeing the development of a game, you can go there. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for throwing that in. I know our, our first family is always you know, eager to check that kind of thing out. So I'm sure they will. And I know I definitely will follow you guys. And I'm just, I'm so excited for you. The Global Innovation Award is amazing. And we all just wish you the best of luck. So thank you again for being here with us. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. letting us talk to you. All right, bye.